Uh, and I'm sure Sam Gamgee never thought of these things. <laughs> Hi there. Welcome, everybody, once again to Cast Iron Wednesday, where it's Wednesday, obviously. <laughs> and we're here on YouTube, obviously, where a lot of the uh, smaller YouTube cooking channels have uh, done a weekly Wednesday tradition for some time now, which is uh, simply doing a uh, cast iron cooking video, or at least a video about cast iron uh, on Wednesday. And I'm, and I'm proud to have been a part of this, and I and especially am glad to... Uh, to see uh, when people show up, and uh, I'm especially grateful to everybody who likes to uh, actually likes to come back and uh, watch this uh, silly show every week. So thank you so much to everybody. Hello, and I can see a lot of people are here already, like John John Glabe and Rick Stumbau and Andrew Bonificio, Book of Camille, Louis Metz, uh, Val's Black Cat's Rules. And Jimmy Lankford and so many others here. Yes, hi, and William Hurt, and it's and again, it's uh, really nice to see everybody. Uh, everybody here tonight. I mean, it's really you, know, you folks who make this a lot of fun <laughs> more than anything else. Um, <clears throat> and as the subject of this uh, video says, uh, well, we are doing potatoes tonight because uh, this was a suggestion made really here in this live chat a couple of weeks ago um, in which uh, somebody brought up the uh, suggestion of uh, doing a potato theme uh, show. And so a lot of people chimed in. Yes. And so here we are. We've uh, got our cast iron out and we're going to be playing with some potatoes tonight. And I figured I'd start out by preparing a, a fancy... A, uh, dish that's popular well on the internet this one is the version done by our friend jeff rogers the culinary fanatic and that is he calls it the potato flour which is uh, quite simply sliced potatoes in this case it's red potatoes uh that i tossed in uh, some olive oil the usual salt pepper garlic powder uh, du uh, dusted on parsley, uh, as I said, red potatoes, and I uh, simply baked, uh, simply arranged them in order here and laid them down in this stargazer uh, 10 inch cast iron skillet. And we baked them for about 45 minutes at 400 degrees Fahrenheit. After that point, uh, you then uh, sprinkle cheese all over it because, hey, what's an internet dish without cheese? And then from there, you simply uh, let it uh, bake for about 15 more minutes. And bam, here we are. Here's a uh, nice dish, you know, a dish that's uh, nice enough for serving. It uh, certainly has a very aesthetic appeal. Uh, it's cheap, and as you can see, it's pretty easy to make, too. So if nothing else, we are going to have ourselves some potatoes uh, when this when this is all done, or maybe even uh, later, or even earlier than that. <laughs> Um, one other thing I think I should start doing immediately before uh, getting too, you know, getting uh, much further in is to prepare another dish so that uh, this one will be able to boil over time. And that, of course, would be good old mashed potatoes. Yeah, what we've got here is one of my other favorite kitchen items. And this is the uh, Wagner Aluminum Dutch oven. It's yes, made by Wagner Ware, the same company that makes Wagner cast iron. And I've simply uh, sliced up uh, a bunch of russet potatoes, enough to cover the bottom of the pot. Uh, for the record, when I do potatoes, uh, mashed potatoes anyway, I never peel them. I always, I've always loved them with the skins on. I think they, I think they had a great flavor to it. It saves a lot of work as well, you know, because you know about peeling potatoes and all that. Um, from here, I'm just going to put in a, a nice uh, dash of kosher salt, probably more, even more than that, uh, because really, as they say, you want the consistency of seawater when you are uh, boiling. So there we go. It's in a rough estimate anyway. And from here, it's only a matter of um, adding up, of uh, simply uh, filling it up with hot with the uh, water. So give me just a second, please, and then we will get into some proper introductions here. I know the theory is that uh, if you use cold water, it supposedly boils faster, and that's uh, pretty much what I'm using here, which is easy enough to do. 
considering that it's January in New England. The temperature is about 13 degrees Fahrenheit outside. And so you better believe the water inside here is uh, pretty darn cold. Now we will cover this and start putting on the heat. And then we will let that rest for about 50 minutes. Uh, enough time to bring it to a boil and boil it for about uh, 30 minutes or so. And then we'll have dish number two, some mashed potatoes. Boy, that sure was easy, wasn't it? <laughs> um, does anybody have the scoop on uh, Culinary Fanatic? Is he going to post more videos? Well, he, of course, has his own agenda. And while he does uh, regularly chat on his Facebook group, and he is still cooking, of course, he does regularly post photos of his cooking. Um, as for whether he is going to be uh, doing more videos, that's really up to him. I mean, I do understand it's been quite a while, if not years or more, um, for, for um since we've seen any major uh, videos from the culinary fanatic that of course is his choice i do know that for a lot of people running a youtube uh, channel for several years can be pretty tiring so and huh, here i am talking about this when i'm in fact approaching the 10th anniversary of this youtube channel so i have no intention of stopping Although I will say, I know it seems like my production of edited video seems to have slowed down drastically over the last couple of months. That's partly because it's been so busy here and partly because at least during January, I seem to have been sick more often than I, than I would like. <laughs> A little bit more on that later. <clears throat> But right now, um, well, as I said, we are getting into some potatoes because, hey, there's any number of uh, potato dishes that uh, we can uh, we can uh, play with. And especially when it comes to cast iron, um, believe me, cast iron and potatoes go together, well, al almost as much as cast iron and cornbread, quite frankly. No matter what you're doing with your uh, with your potatoes, when you do it in cast iron, it almost always makes it look better or and taste better i mean what as i said already we've already done um well this is only a small sample here using a stargazer uh, cast iron skillet <laughs> stargazer of course you know i know a lot of folks have seen this stargazer pan in action before and i still like using it uh which and i make a point of trying to use it as much as possible uh, the it's one of the more elite cast iron pans, I guess you could call it, you know, because it's got a price tag these days. It's something like, what is it, like maybe close to $150 or so? <laughs> yeah, the price of everything has gone up, but it's also because this is one of several new modern cast iron pans that are really trying to uh, capture the, uh, at least a part of the, uh, of the, uh, what's a good word, the luxury cookware market, I guess you could say. So, <laughs> Val's Black Cats, yeah, 19 degrees in uh, North Tonawanda, New York. Yes, exactly. So, well, what can we say? Welcome to winter in the Northeast. And in fact, we've got a nor'easter, a big blizzard expected to come this weekend. Uh, they're talking like maybe six inches to a foot of snow. Or in other words, January in New England. I mean, yeah, this is apparently going to be our first major storm of the winter. But for us here in New England, quite frankly, it's hardly newsworthy. I mean, we get several storms like this every year, or at least we're supposed to. So uh, once in a while, there is a blizzard that really is something memorable. And even though it's going to be a real pain shoveling out, uh, like I said, anywhere from six to 12 inches of snow, Quite frankly, it's how we're barely going to remember this come spring. So, <laughs> hope you don't get the bomb cyclone. Well, we can only see what happens. Meanwhile, down there in Paw Paw, Dan in Louisiana, it's actually been in the 20s. So, <laughs> and I'm sure you folks have probably been panicking about that. So, nothing beats home fries and cast. They brown so well. Oh, I won't disagree with that. But you know what else goes good in, uh, besides home fries? How about... French fries. Yeah, here we are, folks. And while we're waiting, let's uh, see what we can do with uh, putting ourselves together uh, some uh, good old French fries. And uh, that's the thing is like, I went, yeah, I learned the uh, secret to French fries is actually not that hard. And the real trick, anybody who does these at home knows what you really need to do is to fry these twice. I hope you got these. I, I hope I got the temperature up. Oh, yeah, we are uh, doing nicely here for the temperature. This is uh, definitely good for the first one. 
So anyway, that uh, this here is a uh, modern lodge uh, five quart Dutch oven, and I've got the canola oil in here. Uh, and over here, here are our uh, potatoes. Uh, in the back, I've uh, got some golden potatoes that I cut up nicely. I did not bother pe peeling them again, as I said, uh, but I've done my best to dry these things out. I, uh, you know, I pressed them with paper towels. I've let them dry in a rack and everything. Up front here, meanwhile, is another dish that we'll be working on in a few minutes. And these are going to be uh, not only mashed potatoes we have in the back, but we're going to be doing some twice-baked potatoes. And here, I've already baked them once. So uh, what's it say here? One is a mystery skillet. I can't figure out. Not a marking on it at all. Oh, I love those mystery skillets, by the way. Um, if you want, you could always post a... Um, post a picture, you could send it to me on Facebook or an email or even post it to the uh, Cast Iron Cooking Group on Facebook. Okay, I learned to double fry french fries from my mother. Yes, indeed. That's the first, that's the first thing we do. Uh, it, again, we heat the oil to a somewhat lower temperature. As you see, this thing here has just gone over, just gone over uh, 300 degrees, and that means we can take our uh, dried out uh, potatoes here and uh, carefully Poof. Let's start frying, shall we? Um, okay. Probably it might be a better idea rather than draw, tossing them in that way. I think I'll try it this way there. Yeah, because I am not a fan of splashing oil any more than any, any more than you are. So there we go. That's how I should have done it. <laughs> okay. And even though the temperature of the oil is somewhat lower at 300, as you can see, we're getting some good bubbling here. And actually, I have wanted to look up the science of why blanching potatoes work so well. My theory is that this first uh, boiling of the uh, fries here, in fact, actually helps take out a lot of the moisture inside. And that's one reason why we've got all this furious bubbling here. A lot of water is uh, escaping the potatoes. At least that's my theory. So, um, I'm sorry? Yeah. And so, as you know, oil and water don't mix. And so, there we go. We've got all of this fast bubbling. And we only have to uh, do this for a few minutes or so. After this point, we will take, the, take uh, these fries out and lay them out and uh, set them up to dry again. Uh, but only for a few minutes, and then we will raise the temperature of the oil. Excuse me one second. Uh, sorry, I think I got a sneeze here. Well, maybe not. And then we will raise the temperature of the oil, and uh, we will get down to some real frying. But anyway, that's the trick to uh, really getting some nice, crispy fries here, is, is indeed you have to fry them twice. If you, uh, when you go to McDonald's, well, especially McDonald's, because, you know, McDonald's, uh, I will say one thing about their kitchen. You can see into the kitchen when you're standing in the counter there. So, and if you look in the back, you can see their fry machine and that uh, they do just that. They fry their fries twice. Oh, okay. Then, you, then I stand corrected. Nonetheless, either way, it's, you know, the point. Yeah, yeah, that's true. You do, you did correct me on that. Yes, uh, Jamie points out here. What they actually do is they first they fry the fries once and then freeze them, flash freeze them, and then send them out to be fried. So uh, at the uh, restaurants, which of course saves a lot of time as well as probably some money as well. But nonetheless, uh, there's the secret there. <clears throat> And while we're at it, uh, I use the big red or gold potatoes for French fries. Yeah, these are the gold potatoes, in fact. I did get uh, th at least three kinds of potatoes here tonight. I used red potatoes for that uh, flour, and I'm using golden potatoes for these French fries and russet potatoes for the... Um, uh, for the mashed potatoes and really russet potatoes are the potatoes to make to use if you want to make mashed potatoes they're good for a lot of things but especially for mashed potatoes besides the fact that they're usually the cheapest potatoes you can get in the supermarket you can often find like a five pound potato from a uh, bag of those things for maybe three bucks sometimes they're even on sale for cheaper so yeah Russet potatoes are one of those things you always want to have in your pantry or your kitchen. So 
<laughs> William Hurt can't hear what Jamie is saying. Hey, Jamie. Uh, well, again, she was just uh, explaining how, um, you know, with McDonald's and with the others, uh, they, fr they fry the uh, potatoes once and then freeze them and then ship them out to the restaurant. So russets are the best for baking as well. I think I could say that, although I have to say that potato flour didn't turn out too badly either. So <laughs> where's Trouble, the real star of the channel? Well, he's in the right now. He's in the bedroom with uh, Jamie. So, oh, he's sleeping. Okay. He must have worn himself out a little earlier. So... <laughs> oh, sleeping on your wallet? Well, at least we know your wallet's safe. <laughs> JD Hive John, McDonald's or McD's buys Russet Burbank because buys Russet Burbank because they grow the longest for the tallest fries. <laughs> Um, okay. And somebody says I cook mine at 340 degrees first and then 375 degrees. Um, yeah. Uh, so far I have not had a problem doing this initial blanching at, uh, anywhere from 300 to 325, but I guess personal preferences, uh, have a lot to do with it. However, for the second frying, you are correct then. And I will agree with you on that. That's the other thing is that most recipes, when you get down to the actual frying, they usually say to fry at 350 degrees. I've found from experience, I like actually raising the temperature of the oil a little bit more to maybe 365 to 375. And the main reason why for that, of course, is as you know, when you put these things into the water, um, there is a severe temperature, not water, oil, oil. When you put these things into the oil, there is a severe temperature drop enough to the point where it may, where uh, you actually have to heat the, heat everything back up before you can get to proper frying temperature. And the difference of 15 to 25 degrees, I found, does make a big difference as far as getting the oil back to the right temperature. So for that reason, for my frying or my second frying, as we're going to do here, I do like to go, um, as you said, about uh, 365 to 375. So fries and turkey gravy is good too. Love my taters. I want mashed potatoes with turkey gravy. All of that sounds great. And I have no complaints whatsoever about that. <laughs> Um, <clears throat> meanwhile, as noted, as I said, this is a large, uh, cast iron, uh, five quart Dutch oven. This is, this is, uh, one that they sell really all over the place. There's, I shouldn't say there's nothing special about it, even though it's common and you can buy this at Walmart and, uh, just about anywhere else that sells, uh, camping supplies and the like. But this, uh, large Dutch oven is enormously useful. I mean, this, this is probably the reason why I've said before that I recommend for a person's first cast iron pan, it be a large 10-inch uh, skillet. For your second cast iron pan, I might recommend going for a bare iron Dutch oven like this one here. Uh, because I'm, again, I get a lot of use out of my Dutch ovens and, uh, even more so than the enamel Dutch ovens. No, I love my enamel Dutch ovens and they're definitely useful too, but really as far as for everyday use, you will get a lot of use out of a, uh, cast iron Dutch oven like this. I mean, besides the fact that you can make fries, which I know kids love, of course, this is also great for making chicken in a pot for, uh, making big, uh, pot roasts and oh man, the number of recipes you can make with this is literally endless. So, <laughs> uh, potatoes with gravy and melted cheese and all kinds of goodness. <laughs> Bob S. I love my Dio. Yes, indeed. Poutine. Yes, I have made Canadian poutine and I was uh, quite happy with how that turned out too. And again, you, I mean, if you want to do it right, yes, you do have to, uh, fry these fries yourself. So, <laughs> Cajun Homestead, we're already planting our potatoes down here. Fresh is better, little potatoes for boiled crawfish. Uh -huh. uh, it's nice to be able to plant this early, this early in the year down there. Boy, things like this actually make me seriously consider whether I might move down south, like maybe after I retire or something, <clears throat> if I can retire. Um, and so, as yeah, um, as I mentioned, besides all this, I'm still I still have to keep an eye on this. But in addition, I also have we've also prepared um, we've also prepared some other baked potatoes here. And for these, we have uh, scooped out uh, scooped out the insides 
and left the skins so that we can make some twice baked potatoes because if I mean and some potato skins, yes. Because after all, if mashed potatoes are so good, why not make them twice? <laughs> yeah, that was lame. All right. Um, I think what I'll do is I will take these potatoes, uh, these fries out, and let them cool on the rack. And as they're doing that, and I'm heating the oil back up, then I will prepare the uh, potatoes for these twice-baked potatoes. Hey, that sounds like a plan. All right, by this point, this is probably good enough because, after all, we are not going to entirely cook these potatoes. All we're doing is blanching them, and it does seem like, while they are still boiling, a lot of the uh, bubbling does seem to have uh, reduced. So I think we're at the point where uh, we can actually lay these things out carefully. You know, hot oil. Lay these things out to cool. Come on. There we go. I think one got away. And let's get the rest of these out. And from there, we will start raising the temperature and we will prepare ourselves some mashed potatoes to scoop into these uh, potato skins. This spider, for the record, is one of those things that I found at a uh, Chinese uh, market. I have no idea how much it cost, but I doubt I paid more than 3 or $4 for it. It's one reason why I love uh, browsing foreign markets. You can find stuff like this at really, really dirt cheap prices. And is that all of it? Oh, I think I see one more. Come on. Where would you go? There you are. Come on. There it is. And there we go. That's the last of it. Now, from here, like I said, let's turn the temperature back up and start rising temperature while we're at it. Let's also put the lid on to help the temperature rise. I just got to be careful not to do it too much, rise it too much. And let's get down now to the next uh, step, next project, which again, as I mentioned, are some uh, twice-baked potatoes. As I said, uh, we uh, simply uh, made some baked potatoes, and instead of just chowing down on them, we scooped, we scooped out all the insides, and now all we have to do, and these things have cooled off, actually, and now all we have to do is make ourselves some mashed potatoes, potatoes. Um, give me one second, actually. I've got to dig one more thing out of the uh, fridge. I always uh, seem to forget something. Apologies. I know, I, like, every week something like this happens, but... What can I say? I'm, I'm absent-minded. All right, there we go. That's what I wanted. Uh, Especially since these things are cooled off, I think I'm going to uh, throw in some of the country crock. All right, so let's uh, do some of that, shall we? What? Well, the only thing is the mashed potatoes are still boiling. I mean, it's good. they've they've got a long way to go yet. I could do, yeah, I could do that. Okay, that's her. That's the other suggestion. I'm gonna gonna nuke these things for about a minute and get them good and hot again. I know always something, but you were right. There we go. That's about almost the only thing I use my microwave for anyway. For pretty much for heating things softening butter, thawing out frozen meats, and that's about it. <laughs> I've learned that a, that a soak in salted water instead of acid vinegar will stop the ionizing, the oxidizing and browning, also good for uh, cut apples. Hmm, that's interesting. I may want to uh, consider that. So, Christine Borgatti, yes. Uh, two hurricanes and a major freeze last year. Ouch. Oh, my condolences to you, Cajun Homestead. So, <laughs> 
And what was that about McDonald's fries? Uh, let me see. Oh, yeah. I thought blanching was in hot water. Maybe I've eaten too many McDonald's fries. Well, it is actually, too. But the idea is just that. Blanching is really a fast dip in hot liquid. So, uh, so people consider the same thing, whether they're blanching in water or blanching in oil. And, there we go. I'm not sure if the term comes from the, from the French word blanc, which I think just means white anyways. Of course, you're not, you're not exactly cooking these things with your blanching, so that may very well be the case. But there we go. Okay, so start with some. Okay, some of the some uh, country crock here. Then from here, let's also throw in. Uh, where is it? A little bit of ground pepper. Yeah, I cheated a little bit. I'm using pre-ground pepper this time. I'm sorry. Blanching is not hot water. No, it, is water. it is in water. Well, I have heard the tr use the term in oil, though. So, all right. But either way, where did I put my salt? Well, I put kosher salt here. I guess that will have to do. Not too much of it, but that should be enough. A little bit of parsley. Again, not too much. And then from here, let's see if I'm able to mix this around enough because I've got to actually mash this stuff. So that means, even though this is cooked enough that, yeah, it is, let me move this over a little bit. There we go. It is cooked enough so that it is mashing. I better move this over a little bit. I have this bad habit of, uh, put it, of putting my hand right in front of the camera and blocking the view. And I really have got to try angling the camera to stop that. Even though we've got some of that here, it helps as well to throw in just a wee bit of milk. That will help to mash and liquefy everything. And once we do that, well... Technically, we could eat this right out of the bowl as it is, but of course, the point is, we're going to bake this some more. And I'm certainly looking forward to doing so. All right, so far, so good. This doesn't take very long either because, hey, these potatoes are already well cooked. However, I think I'll throw in... A little bit more of this stuff because it's never, yeah, because you can never have too much butter, or I can't believe it's not butter. Oh, yes. I'm waiting for the uh, YouTube comments about how dare I cook with the evil margarine. <laughs> so I'm a rebel. Sue me. <laughs> or better yet, bite me. <laughs> Okay, there we go. This, once this is all absorbed, oops, careful. Once this is all absorbed, this should be soft enough to stuff back into those potatoes. Let me see if I can get a closer look at fact. There we go. So far, so good. Yeah, this is, this is not looking too badly. I would say, and of course, like those potato, like the that potato flour, twice baked potatoes are as much about the presentation as about the taste. It's the type of thing they serve in restaurants because they're actually cheap to make, but they look good, very photogenic, especially when you make them in cast iron. <laughs> so. Yes, indeed. There we go. That did not take too long, did it? We've got some nice mashed potatoes right here. And Rick Stumbo, bite me. Maybe, maybe a late, maybe another time. No, I said fight me. <laughs> I use heavy. I use heavy cream in mashed potatoes, which is uh, definitely very sweet and tasty. Yes, 
I love sitting down and having somebody else do the cooking for me. That pretty much sums it up, doesn't it, though? <laughs> and uh, minced garlic and park cheese on my mashed potatoes. And that's not a bad idea either, actually. While we're at it, I think I'll take just a few seconds. Take just a few seconds. Throw in a little bit of uh, just a little bit of garlic powder, which is another the, of those things that all the big professional chefs frown upon. How dare you use garlic powder, <laughs> even though it's got a thousand and one uses and it's really convenient. There's really nothing wrong with convenient cooking, as I've found. So again, I'm cooking really just for myself and my roommates and family and friends. Yeah. If I was uh, in a contest or if I worked at a restaurant, yes, things like that really would have a bad effect on the uh, presentation, but I'm not. I mean, it's like really the taste and this, I would think for 90% of all cooking, this should be the case. The taste is what matters. Presentation is great. And if you want to put some effort into the presentation, that's also great. But if it doesn't taste good, then what's the point? Of course, I'm not exactly saying anything that you don't know already, so. And having said that, let's start stuffing ourselves some potatoes, shall we? Which means what I should do is break out the baking pan. Here it is. which means we get to see some cast iron again, which in this case is a Lodge Blacklock modern day 10 inch skillet. Uh, this little staining, this little uh, stuff on the top, is, well, residue from the potatoes. We use the same pan to bake those potatoes. Now we're gonna use the same pan to bake them again, because why not? So, and best of all, this 10 inch skillet is big enough. Actually, I think I can put this big one in the center here to fit six of these with plenty of room to spare. I could do this to do the tops, but Jamie wants to fry these tops and uh, se separately, especially so that uh, we can have some potato skins as well as potato fry, as well as French fries. and. Again, that all sounds good to me. I'm certainly not going to complain about that. So, now all we have to do is carefully start stuffing our potatoes. And I know I haven't said it yet, although I did mention Sam Gamgee at the beginning of this, but hey, that's why I included it in the uh, title, in the uh, description of this video, because yeah, I love the Lord of the Rings movies, and actually, I grew up reading the books. I love them both. But yes, I, I know, I know that meme is good old potatoes, boil them, mash them, stick them in a stew, and there's nothing wrong with that. However, if you boil them and mash them and stick them in a stew, then you're not going to get things like baked potatoes or twice-baked potatoes or fried potatoes. And not that there's anything wrong with this either. I mean, it really just means that, hey, feel free to branch out, which is something I didn't learn until uh, late in my life as well, not until after I learned how to cook. It's like when I was growing up, I mean, my family, I think I mentioned enough times before, my family, they were not exceptional cooks. Even my dear beloved grandmother, she could do a few dishes very well and almost nothing else, <laughs> which is why we usually had a very small rotation of maybe about, oh, I don't know, two weeks worth, 14 different dishes that we uh, pretty much rotated through through our entire lives. Um, once I started actually learning how to cook for myself, I was bitten by the cooking bug, and I had the urge to try new things. And I still have that urge, and I've learned a lot of, discovered a lot of great food from it. 
some of which is easy and some of which is um, a, a lot of other people may consider to be everyday stuff. I mean, heck, his, and, I mean, I'll say right now, this is my first time doing twice baked potatoes. I've never done twice baked potatoes before tonight. And, and at which point some of you are saying, what, really? I grew up with these. Yes, exactly. That's my point in that um, for me, it's, uh, this is the thrill of discovering something new. And I'm enjoying this very much, um, which is why if you have grown up having twice baked, baked potatoes your entire life, well, congratulations. You uh, had a great dish your entire life. But just as well, I encourage you to try something new as well. Find something that interests you that uh, maybe you've never tried before and give it a try and see what happens. I mean, after all, the worst that can happen, well, the worst that can happen is I could have an allergic reaction and die. <laughs> okay, that's not very likely. <laughs> the worst that most likely will happen is that you don't like it, which is not really that big a deal, is it? <laughs> so, <laughs> oh, yeah, welcome to the Internet, where pretty much it's always the worst. You know, it's pretty much... Um, that's one reason why I, I do not take my medical advice from the internet. You know, hey, I've got this funny little uh, coloring on the tip of my finger. You've got cancer. Uh, yeah. So, no, I'm not, I'm not going that in. So, okay. But there we go. And, and actually it was out of the view, of course. But, hey, just like that, we've got ourselves some stuffed potatoes. How about that? Which means now we get to, did I put it back in the fridge? I did. One second again. Ugh. I mean, okay, it's a good habit to have putting stuff like cheese back in the fridge right away. Yes, I, I won't deny that. Even so, all right, now we just carefully... Put on some cheese and more cheese and more cheese. And that's the nice thing about a cast iron pan. This cheese that drops off the side is almost certainly going to burn, but that's not going to ruin the pan or the food for that matter. <laughs> there we go. Now... That takes care of dish number two. We've done the uh, potato flour. We've started some French fries, and now we are working on some mashed potatoes, or twice-baked potatoes, sorry. And having done that, I've got to pull back now. And into the oven we go. And with that, in maybe 20 to 30 minutes tops, it will be done. So we'll have dish number two, cheese, lard. Yeah, Romano, Romano hard as a rock. Well, actually, this is um, white cheddar. It's a uh, sharp, you know, sharp white cheddar. So it's not, it's actually not Romano, not to worry. It looks like Romano, but it's good old cheddar. <laughs> and here's an example of trying something new. Uh, my roommate, Jamie, until only recently, she had never had sharp cheddar cheese. She had only had... Well, well, I know that recently I got some, some sharp cheddar cheese and it bowled you over. <laughs> okay. Well, anyway... I, I, well, yeah... <laughs> Okay, there is that. Jimmy Langford, I don't know about you guys, but we grew up dirt poor. And this uh, comment just scrolled back up. Uh, I don't know about you guys, but we grew up dirt poor. Potatoes are a great meal in many ways and cheap. We had them daily. I still love them. And I'm, I'm with you with that as well. We did not have a lot of food when we were growing up as well. 
my mom was a chicken freak and we ate chicken maybe about three times a week and box mac and cheese maybe another four times a week and somewhere in between we did indeed have a lot of potatoes yes so gourmet potatoes for you and roommates says beverly fitzgerald waiting on uh Waiting something, my just baked everything bagels. Ooh, that sounds good. Don't please be sure to uh, cook some, uh, you know, sure to uh, take some pictures of those. So we need head to head New England. Well, we need to head to New England to raid your potatoes. <laughs> I'm sure you can get better potatoes elsewhere, actually. I mean, we are like the maple syrup capital of the world, where, or the baked bean capital of the world, or even the molasses capital of the world. I'm sorry? Oh, well, there is that, yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, no. I mean, I, I don't think many people know about New England potatoes. <laughs> Check the oil temp. Yes, good point, good point. Got to keep up with it. Okay, let us bring, let's come back to here, shall we? Remembered my glove this time. How about that? Ooh, that's a sign, all right, that this is definitely... This is probably hot enough. I hope I haven't overdone it, in fact. No, actually, we're doing pretty good here. So I think I will keep it uh, uncovered, though, because we are getting close. Yeah, I'd say uh, we're close. Maybe just another few minutes, because as I, as I said earlier, I want to bring this temperature to higher than 350. But yes, thank you very much for the reminder to check the oil temperature. That's one reason why I actually planned on just making these things like one dish at a time here, especially because when frying with all this hot oil going around, yeah, this is going to be the center of attention. I'm not going to try making another dish while these things are uh, while these things are frying here. So. <laughs> Hi, Jimmy Langford. I was a 60s child and raised most of our food. We raised a couple of kinds of potatoes. Yes, indeed. 375, 375, according to Jeff. Yeah, there we go again when it comes to frying. So, <laughs> um, <clears throat> yeah, actually, that's, I guess it's worth mentioning there that, uh, yeah, of course, you know, these days, I mean, yeah, when you were young, you still needed to learn. And when I was, well, no, I think I was probably, I was part of the first generation, Generation X, that actually grew up not knowing how to cook anything. So, um, because of course we were, uh, we were even past the TV dinner generation, which I think was my parents' generation, but they didn't subs, sub, uh, what's the word, subsist entirely on TV dinners and uh, frozen uh, vegetables and all that. They still had to do some cooking. On the other hand, my generation became, well, unfortunately, the first real generation that grew up with Walmart. Wow, did you see that? <laughs> and so thanks to uh, not just Walmart, but their contemporaries as well, we, uh, you can pretty much spend your entire life without having to cook. All you need is a microwave, and then you can get fat on pot pies, burritos, frozen pizzas, those three things alone. Well, you'll, you'll certainly get tired of them soon enough. <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, you can certainly sustain yourself on those things. <laughs> well, I've got a little story about that that I'll also be uh, regaling a little later. It's kind of related to uh, the other story I'm going to be telling it near the end of this. Uh... Okay. I was relating old memories. The cheese would be in the fridge for months. The white cheddar can't go for too long. I was so blessed. Always had more than enough. Yes, some kind of cheese can go for a long time, but cheddar, unfortunately, is not one of them. I have had instances where the cheddar has grown mold even in the fridge, unfortunately. So, yeah, I've got, I've got to make sure to go through my cheese as uh, quickly as possible. So, during the late 50s, we had to learn about home economics, which included cooking. Oh, man, I remember home economics class. <laughs> of course, since I was a Boy, naturally, we didn't do much for home economics in our high school. I mean, granted, we did have, they gave us a cursory one semester each of things like uh, cooking, 
or sewing. But of course, since I was a boy, most of the time they assigned us to shop, <laughs> you know, where we got to build those stupid ashtrays and benches and, <laughs> and things like that. Uh, on the other hand, I do remember liking that one semester of basic introductory cooking that I, that I, uh, that I took. So regardless, I, yeah, I can only wish that I had in fact, uh, grown up cooking. And I guess for the past 10 years or so, I've done my best to, uh, well, make up for it. Beverly Fitzgerald during world war II, everything was rationed. Everybody had a victory garden, raised rabbits and twice baked potatoes. Yes, indeed. Twice baked potatoes and twice baked fries. And uh, I, at one thing I remember, of course, are cartoons from World War II, which you can still watch today. And even then, there are a lot of, a lot of uh, World War II references. Was this trip really necessary? And uh, that famous one where uh, Bugs Bunny and the uh, gremlin were caught in this huge, gigantic bomber plane. You you probably remember that one. You know that's one where he was chasing the gremlin all through all throughout the plane, and then finally the gremlin pulled out the steering wheel, threw it out the window, and the plane started diving to the earth, getting faster and faster, going at like a hundred fifty billion jillion zillion miles an hour. Incredible, ain't it? Until finally, at the last second, it just suddenly slows and doesn't hit the ground and you hear it go pew, 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 pow and then here he is uh then there's uh bugs and the gremlin explaining to the audience sorry folks we ran out of gas yeah you know how it is with these a cards <clears throat> of course i didn't get that until i grew up and learned more history about world war ii because they never taught you stuff like that in history class i'll say that much let me check those. Let me check that uh, temperature once again. There we are. Okay, now I'd say we are definitely. It's time to fry. So now comes the fun part, and here you are. You got a nice uh, view of it too. Okay, do not use your hands for this, dude. Let's do this right. In the go. And boy, is that thing going now, isn't it? <laughs> One other thing I've learned about fr about frying is it, so easy. How can you tell when it's done? When the fries start to float, then you know they're done. It's nice and simple like that. So let's get the rest of these things in here. Oh, never mind. Almost done. And this is the part, of course, where if you have kids, you have to be very, very careful. I personally would want my kids in the kitchen. I would tell them stand back, but that way they can watch because, yeah, I mean, it's fun to watch as this thing boils furiously here. And furthermore, by uh, stand, letting them stand and watch, of course, you know, They'll be able to experience it. They'll be able to see it. It won't become one of those forbidden things that will be all the more tempting that they might want to try doing when you're not home. So it's definitely much better to uh, have kids in the kitchen as long as they're properly supervised and kept safe. And that's about it. all I'll say about that because that's all that needs to be said. Okay, the gremlin in the sabot. Oh yeah, the sabotage. Hmm, that's yeah. The gremlins from the Kremlin. That's why I have. Yeah, that's why I have to. Uh, that's what I have to use to get the bagels out of the boiled water before baking. Yes, indeed. Like I said, this is a spider. This is a really useful little thing too. And like I said, I think I paid maybe three, four dollars for it at a Chinese market. If that, which I'll say this again, that's one reason why I love going to foreign markets because this thing here would probably cost, oh, I don't know, $15, $20 if you went to bed bugs and beyond. So, I mean, really, go browse foreign markets. They are wonderful. I mean, you, you can find a lot of weird stuff in there, stuff that you've never heard of, some stuff that you might want to try. And quite often you'll find yourself an amazing bargain for something. 
like a spider, for instance. <laughs> um, loose lips sink ships. <laughs> During the aftermath of Hurricane Maria, I did all the cooking for my neighbor. So congratulations on that. Boy, is it just me or is it looks like this is starting to float already? Well, I'm going to give it maybe, maybe another couple of minutes, but this is looking pretty good already, I'd say. So that sure didn't take long, did it? Yes. Oh, didn't think of that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Jamie's suggestion to put those potatoes back into the baked potatoes, use a piping bag. I hope I have a fire extinguisher nearby. Yes, exactly. Um, let me see here. As a matter of fact, here it is. Fire extinguisher. So, yes, I do have a fire extinguisher at the ready. I have not yet had to use it, and hopefully I never will. But especially, yeah, these things are probably uh, just about done at this point already. Actually, let me do one thing. And I have to say, that did not take long at all either. Nonetheless, um, very quickly, welcome to the internet, folks, as break out my phone and take a few pictures, because this is good stuff, all the bubbles and everything like that. And then after that, it'll be time to get these things out of the oil. There we go. Oh, yeah. But, yeah, I'd better, just to be safe right now, turn the temperature off so that this can slowly cool as we get these things off of the, uh, out of the oil. And let me move this over here quickly. What time is it? Okay, we're getting to that time already. That's good. Meanwhile, once this is done, we're gonna be it's gonna be about ready to do the uh, mashed potatoes. But nonetheless, there we are. And yeah, I have to say that did not take very long at all. These were golden potatoes for the record. And these are looking pretty nice. So let's move these things over to a rack. Yes? No, you're right. Well, I've got to do one thing. I've got to uh, remove these fries and then. Okay, yeah. And then from there, I immediately have to put some kosher salt on these things. You know, if you want good salted fries, you've got to salt them immediately when they come out of the oil. So here we go. There we go, and that's that. And now that we've done that, as Jamie suggested, while the oil is still hot, let's throw in those potato skins. Plop. Plop. Up back. I think I can even turn that heat back on. Although this the soil should still be pretty darn hot. Up. Yes, that's true. They are already cooked. Up and plop. Let me turn this one over. I'm afraid this one might. Well, no, we didn't. Unfortunately, 
There was only so much time tonight. There we go. Sorry, she's oh, yeah. <laughs> so we're off to a uh, decent start here. Yeah. Thermal laws. The oil is heated up to capacity. Exactly. So, uh, yeah. So, yeah. Electric. Yeah. That's the other thing about an electric stove, I will say at least. I mean, it takes a long time to heat up the cast iron, but at the same time, it takes a long time to cool it off. So. Fortunately, I have solar energy. Oh, that's good. My white cat in my lap has just shed all over my black jeans. Oh, I know that feeling. Yes, indeed. We've got a black cat and we've got a black and white cat. And yeah, they have definitely left their marks on all our clothes. No questions there. <laughs> did you blanch the potatoes before you fry them? Well, no. As a matter of fact, I did not. You were right. I'm, I goofed where these where these potato skins are concerned the actual fries yes i did uh if you uh scroll back earlier in the video you will see the blanching stage where we did indeed uh fry the uh blanch these potatoes first but these potato skins no i have to admit i did forget and i just dropped these into the hot oil Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Jamie is reminding me we did not have to blanch these skins because they're already cooked. We we baked these potatoes, so uh, so it's not necessary to blanch these potato skins. So once again, she's uh, correct about that. Bubbles look good. <laughs> Thanks for the mention of the potatoes golden. Yes, indeed. I'm not a potato expert. I mean, I, really, I know... A few different brands of potatoes, all the usual ones. And I realize there are more exotic brands of potatoes. You know, you've got your russets, which are great for mashing. And in fact, that's what we've got to do next. Um, but I'm going to have to actually let me at least turn off the, the heat on, the, on there. Because, again, while I'm frying, this oil has to take my entire attention. I am not going to turn away from this oil to mash those potatoes. They will come after this. Safety and all that. So, especially since I'm still an amateur. But what was I saying? Oh, yeah. Different kinds of potatoes, of course. I mean, naturally, again, you've got your russets, which are the best for mashing and baking as well. Uh, you've got your golden potatoes, which I've got, which I've just used here to make some fries. You have your white potatoes, which are also good for fries. Um, I think maybe white potatoes tend to stay a little bit more solid than the golden potatoes. Although, yeah, these potatoes here, uh, they've certainly turned out nicely. And then, of course, you've got your sweet red potatoes, which are really great for just, you know, baking and uh, eating and uh, using in dishes like corned beef and cabbage and other things like that. But yeah, I mean, in fact, I, I've i even uh, made mashed red potatoes, which make an excellent potato salad. Boy, look at the, look at the way this thing is going here, the way this thing is like puffing. That's because it's top heavy, unfortunately. And so it's got an air bubble underneath, which means every so often it's just simply turning, yeah, um, look, giving a little, uh, bubble of bubble like that and a little puff. <laughs> and then of course, you know, as I said, there are the exotic potatoes, which are really nice to try, you know, once in all places in Oneonta, New York, where my friends live, uh, once at the farmer's market in that place, I, uh, picked up a pound or so of blue potatoes and those potatoes were purple inside and out. So I don't know why they call them blue potatoes. Nonetheless, they had a nice creamy consistency to them, and they were really good for, for uh, cooking with, and especially because they looked unusual. They looked like bright, bright purple potatoes. Uh, that was definitely, there was definitely a quality to them that uh, they really stood out. So, <laughs> Bohemoth One, you are so lucky, Bohemoth. Part of South Carolina are you from, says the Bohemoth. And when I see the Bohemoth, I'm immediately I can only think of Reservoir Dogs. Yes. Uh, and be the 12th caller and you will win tickets to the Monster Truck Rally where you'll be seeing the Bohemoth. <laughs> Purple potatoes. Yeah. Hot oil, burn on skin, no mercy. Definitely. I do. Uh, CIC, do you find the thermal laser thermometer as accurate as a digital thermometer? 
Um, in some ways, yes. In some ways, no. The thorough, this thing here, which by the way is not a fancy one, I paid less than twenty bucks for this. It's really best for measuring the surface temperature. Uh, whereas with other with other things like say for a meat thermometer and the like, that's much better for uh, being you know for uh, judging internal temperatures. And I, I wouldn't be surprised if these uh, potato skins are almost done already. So, yeah, once they uh, come out and once they cool off, that should be that. Oh, there we go. That's what I wanted. I'm finally turning, managed to turn one of these things over here. There we go. Now we got little bubble boats. They're probably about done. I'm going to give it a few more seconds because they've been they've been floating um, skin side up and I'm trying to turn them over and they just don't seem and now 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 they're finally cooperating so I'm happy with that and one more there we go little bubble boats there and within about a minute or so I'm sure these things will finally be done that's deep frying. Yes, it is. I probably did not even have to use so much oil in this. So we're definitely going to have to reserve this oil and uh, fry something else so as not to waste it. <laughs> Imagine spilling that on your foot. No, I do not want that to happen. No, sorry. Once this, once we are done with this video tonight, I'm going to put this in towards the back of the stove so that, you know, there's no chance that the cats will uh, have any, any problem with it. So yeah, we have to, we certainly have to consider that while you are flipping the potatoes. Do we get to call you Spider-Man? <laughs> well, my spider sense is certainly tingling. And if I get any oil on myself, it's going to do a lot more than tingle. I'll say that. <laughs> I left, I came back, but this is just a heart attack and a cleanup mess. Yes, it is. There is no denying that. Well, actually, not so much of a cleanup mess. That's one other nice thing about the Dutch oven. It uh, really contained the splatter, and there is really not a lot of splatter. Not, say, if I had fried these in a regular uh, cast iron pan. So that's yet another good reason for uh, using a Dutch oven for deep frying. That, plus, this is also going to help with the seasoning on this particular pan. So uh, this is going to be, so as far as a cleanup mess is concerned, really, it's going to be pretty easy to wash out this pot, and then uh, just, it should be uh, ready after that. So, and, it, and so far, as I mentioned, I've shown, we've looked at a uh, large uh, cast iron, uh, five-quart Dutch oven with a regular large lid up there. Um, this lid right now is, Sitting, let me move the mic over a little bit. Okay, I'll I'll take him out. I'll take him out. Yeah, okay, I'll take them out. All right. I've been asked to take those skins out, so let's do that. Probably yes, which is kind of what I was going for. No offense. But okay, actually, I should probably put some uh, cheese on them right now while they are still nice and hot. Right. Yes, indeed. Okay, so that will be the last thing. Whoops, there we go. Let me turn this temperature off. There we go. So that way this oil will slowly cool down and we will not have any fire hazard. <laughs> That's really something you have to be very careful, as you know, when it comes to frying <laughs> grease fires. All right, let me uh, move this back over here just for a moment. Move this out of the way. Put a little bit of cheese on these. Just a little bit. Okay, maybe a lot, not just a little. I'm sorry? No, I never have. I have never had potato skins. Not like this, anyway. 
I mean, I've had, you know, I've had just that potato skin crisps, but I've never had potato skins. Yeah, that's why I was, uh, that's why I made these things so poorly. It's all right. And having done that. Now, is anyone else as surprised about that as I am? Hey. <laughs> Well, I'm, I'm not sure. I will find out. And this is too shallow, unfortunately. Okay. So we will not be able to put that on top. We'll just have to leave that as is. <laughs> Cheese. Welcome, Jose. Oh, yes. Welcome, Jose. Um, okay. At this point, since we're like an hour into this, uh, I think there's something I should say. And then after that, we will do some mashed potatoes. And what I have to say is the winner of the three ugly hammered skillets has not contacted me. I have been waiting for her email and I have not seen it. So far, it's been at least three days since the winner was was uh, was uh, determined. So I'm seriously considering at this point whether or not we may want to, uh, well, maybe after tonight, perhaps, uh, we may want to uh, consider the original winner of the uh, Ugly Hammered Skillets, which, of course, would be Jose Latios, I guess. I'd like to uh, put that out for uh, commentary and see what uh, folks think about that. Because, again, what the rules of this contest, the, and the really, you know, the main point of these uh, giveaways has been to promote my channel. You know, I, I love would love people to watch. And so that's why one of the rules of this channel is to, uh, no, not channel. One of the rules of these contests is for you to click on that subscribe button so that you will get notifications of things like when the contest winners are chosen and the like. We've already had one instance where one person, after winning, he did send me an email. No, actually, he never did. That was the whole point. After winning, never heard from him again. Never, and I never saw him again on the live either. And so that would mean that, and that's so that showed that he had not clicked on the subscribe button. And it's starting to seem like it's happening yet again. Namely, that the person who uh, actually won the contest with all 200, what was it, like 230 something people, the person who won the contest has not contacted me, which has to mean she did not click the uh, subscribe button and she never got the notification. She is not aware. And that would mean that's really essentially that would make her uh, entry invalid based on the rules. Uh, Whereas I've said enough times, I'm trying to be as fair as possible. Yes. Yeah, it's the old, you know, you know, like everybody else says, if you enjoy this video, please like, subscribe, and yeah, though, yeah, it is part of the rules. I mean, though I explicitly state in the rules, uh, you click on subscribe as well as typing the secret word into the chat. And during the chat, yeah, well, well, it does, yes, but uh, nonetheless, uh, yeah, I mean, I say during the uh, live it's, it itself that uh, I ask you to uh, hit the subscribe button. So it's not like she didn't hear the rules. Okay, well, based on that, I'd say at this point, we're about ready to consider Jose the winner of these uh, ugly hammered skillets. And I'm sure Jose wouldn't mind that either because he's definitely a, a cast iron aficionado. And I would certainly like a prize like this to go to somebody who we know on this channel. So that's uh, that. I think is something that we will uh, consider, and we I think we will see by tomorrow morning, which means we've got only one more thing to do as far as these potatoes are concerned, and that is time to well we we uh, we've already boiled them, and now we've got to mash them. We're not going to stick them in a stew because we're going to have ourselves some good old mashed potatoes. Um. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Yo, yes, that. I remember that. Okay. Yes. Which means, now I've got to uh, move the camera around one last time. And try to get a good view. 
Actually, I think I'll probably move that thing over to the front uh, after this. So, yeah, so I think I'll get the view here. Well, no, first, well, okay, I've got to move this thing anyway. Ugh. This potato flour here. As usual, I'm very disorganized. I apologize yet again, but at least this is this this is cool enough for me to lift with my hands. I am not burning myself. Um, you can applaud if you want. Yay! Good. Yeah. Thank you. Um, Thanksgiving's a dog. Well, okay. Eric's mom. Hold on. Thanksgiving. Go ahead. Okay. Wait. wait. Re re repeat that. Okay. A couple. Uh, not this past, well, Thanksgiving, a couple years ago, Eric's mom had came for Thanksgiving, and she was the cutest thing ever. <laughs> she kept being like, oh, my, Jamie, your hair is, oh, my goodness, your hair is, there's so, the sauce. But then my potatoes that I made, she was in love with the potatoes. How did you get them so they weren't, there's no lumps. How is there, there's no lumps. How do you do it? And uh, she was actually pretty amazed by the fact that I actually use a coffee cup. <laughs> and I smashed them with a coffee cup, um, or any kind of cup, you know, I just put it down, I smash it through, so, um, but I don't use a blender or anything like that, so it uh, might be something you guys want to give a try, like a, you know, I just take a cup, smash, uh, uh, a can works as well, too, um, you know, anything that you really kind of just smash them down, you know, well enough, so, yeah, it's a cute little story right there. Oh, yeah, it's, yeah, it's besides coffee cups or something special, because I, it makes me think of mom's unbreakable mugs, mm -hmm. and I think I've told that story before, so... <laughs> I think for the thing too for the for the contest, I think we're gonna start saying like seventy-two hours to reply. And it has been seventy-two hours. Yeah. It's been oh days. yeah, well over that. And then also like to not only subscribe but to like, like subscribe, both of them. Because when you like like the uh, the live, you know, the more likes you get, the more it pops up and uh, higher up in uh, people's stream and stuff. So. Well, there is that. Yeah, yes. likelihood of it being up, um, you know, in the in the suggestions. Hmm. So, and that's what this is all about—is promoting the channel. So, definitely. Yeah. You know, so not only liking, but subs not only subscribing, but to like as well, because a lot of people are already subscribed. So we're not—it's not like we're getting, you know, a ton of new subscribers every week, you know. Or, so to like, like the video too, like, subscribe. I don't, not so much as the share thing. I'm yeah. not really checking that out. But always, the shares are always appreciated. Oh, definitely. So, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Hi, everybody. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Good night, Jamie. <laughs> but thank you so much. And let's throw in a little bit of pepper. A little bit of parsley. I know a lot of people use basil in their uh, mashed potatoes, but uh, even though basil is a nice flavor in itself, I think I like parsley better. I don't think the flavor is as strong as basil. And so I think it, I, I personally am finding myself more partial to parsley in, than uh, basil in my mashed potatoes. I don't think I've ever put a green ring in my potatoes. A little bit of garlic powder. And finally, of course... Keeping amount of milk, maybe about a cup or so. And then this goes back in the fridge. And with that, oh yeah, I need this because the metal's still hot. And with that, we get to enjoy some mashed potatoes. Mash away, mash away, mash away all. Sure does look like a lot of liquid. I'm hoping I didn't do too much, but I suspect it will not. Because that what this means, of course, is we'll have some nice creamy mashed potatoes. Not liquid mashed potatoes, but good and creamy. Relatively speaking, of course, because we still have these skins in here as well. Because, as I mentioned already, I, I love my mashed potatoes with the skins on. I've never had any problem with that. I love the skins. And I know, even though it's not exactly a hard and fast rule, my understanding is the popular term is, is that you've got your mashed potatoes when they're made with, the, with peeled potatoes. 
And when they you make them with the skins on, and they're smashed potatoes. Yes, they do leave lumps. There's no denying that. Right. Leave large lumps of potato. Yeah. Okay. Smashed. Okay. Then that's a good point as well. As Jamie says, I don't know if everybody heard that. With smashed potatoes, you smash them and you still leave lumps in there. Uh, where as opposed to mashed potatoes, which in fact I've seen some chefs run there, put make these things so creamy that they then run them through a strainer to especially to, yeah, especially to make them especially smooth and creamy. And yeah, that is good. I will admit that. But I, but on the other hand, I don't have any problem with lumpy mashed potatoes. Because they're just potato lumps. And these things are certainly full of flavor. There's no denying that. There we go. Despite all of that liquid, seems to have been absorbed nicely by the potatoes. Which means, there we go. And that is dish number four. I think I, yeah, I'm pretty sure I've told my masher story as well. Why I've got this giant masher here. Namely that... Uh, I had a cheap dollar store masher, which of course broke after like about two or three uses, and then another one, and then another one, and I just got sick and tired of it, and I said, I'm going to get myself an industrial strength masher, and so I went onto Amazon, and I found uh, a masher uh, that uh, definitely is the kind that was used in restaurants, so I figured, well, that means that's going to last a long time. And the dimensions of that thing said it had uh, said four inches. So I thought that thing was like four inches in height. Turned out to be four inches in, um, what's the word? Width. And so as a result, I get this huge masher here. I certainly was not expecting, but hey, it gets the job done. It mashes potatoes. And so I, as people like to say, well, gee, do you think you're compensating for something? <laughs> Maybe I am. But it gets the job done. And that's my masher story. <laughs> yes, I know. Jamie, again, says she never uses a masher. She uses a coffee cup. <laughs> oh, uh, I'm going to have to rewatch this one. What did he add into the potatoes? Into the potatoes, I put in a whole stick of butter. Oh, I boil them in good salty water, by the way. I did not skimp on the salt. So as a result, I had I did not have to add any salt to the potatoes after after it was done. Uh, like I said, I put in a whole stick of butter. This, for the record, is a Wagner Dutch oven, which is about a four and a half quart pot. So there's an idea of the volume there. I used probably about seven to eight potatoes, which is enough to cover the bottom of the pot. And so I boiled them till they're ready to mash. Um, again, I put in a whole one whole stick of butter. I put in maybe a cup, maybe a cup and a half even of uh, whole milk. Then to there, I just threw in some ground black pepper, some garlic powder, some dried parsley, and that was about it, and started mashing and mashing and mashing. And as I said already, I did not peel these potatoes. And so this is the result, and those are mashed potatoes. And that means we've gotten through four separate potato dishes here, made in cast iron and aluminum. So I'd say we're, we're doing pretty goodly here. Goodly. <laughs> Avoids gluey, overdone potatoes, too. Papa Dan, I spent one summer in Leesville in the 70s. That was at a government request. <laughs> Louis J. Cast Iron Cooking. I'm going to try it and post it on my channel. Oh, yeah. It's very simple. I'm not even sure if I've written this recipe down, although if not, I really should, because, especially because it's so simple. Uh, the imperfection lumps may make the batch perfect. Yes, indeed. This is definitely more of a family dish. You know, these are the type of mashed potatoes you can tell they're homemade. You can also tell they're not that powdered stuff, the mashed potato stuff. Um, <clears throat> I have never gotten those powdered mashed potatoes since I learned how to cook, and I do not miss them. Now, there are those who say that those powdered mashed potatoes do have their own uses in a pinch. Among other things, they're a thickener. You can put them in stews and stuff like that, and I don't deny that. And if you want to do that, I'm more power to you. I'm sure there's nothing wrong with it, but believe me, 
Ever since I started mashing my potatoes, I can only say never again. I'm never, never having that powdered box stuff again for mashed potatoes. And once you've made your own mashed potatoes, I can only hope you agree. If you don't, well, okay, then we disagree. It's potatoes. But I'm pretty sure you will agree. <laughs> I don't care for lumpy potatoes. Yes, exactly. Turner Fowler. Well, in that case, Turner Fowler, may I recommend a channel that has re really exploded in popularity? You've probably heard about it. This chef guy named Brian Lagerstrom, who up until recently, his channel was called Weeds and Sardines. He has managed to uh, get over half a million subscribers because he did a really well-made channel, a very friendly personality. And he's um, the best way to describe this guy. You know, people have compared him to that other guy, you know, Josh Wiseman. And here's the difference between Josh Wiseman and, and Brian Lagerstrom. I, well, he's not pretentious. That's one. Yes. <laughs> I watched Josh. Uh, Wiseman's videos because they're fun to watch. They're like live action cooking cartoons and then they, they do look nice. But I mean, you know, I'm never going to make my burgers by, all the way by growing the buns from scratch. So <laughs> that kind of thing. <laughs> On the other hand, Brian Lagerstrom, he makes videos that you want to try. I've made some of his videos too, and they've turned out pretty darn good. And he has done this really, really creamy mashed potato recipe, the point where he actually runs it through a strainer. So if you don't like uh, lumpy mashed potatoes, go to his channel and look up his mashed potatoes and see what you and see what you think. <clears throat> did you ever get my email? Actually, Jose, yes, I did get your email. So, and it looks like now at this point. I guess I'm just going to have to be asking you for a shipping address so that I can send you your prize <laughs> because it was a little bit of luck, I will say as well, because the original person, no, the second person did not answer the contest. So did not answer and has not contacted me. So that would mean that, Jose, you are in fact the winner of uh, three ugly hammered cast iron skillets. Yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, yeah, he is a bit pretentious, yes. I mean, granted, you know, he's got a channel of 5 million subscribers, and he's got that cookbook of his that's been on top of the uh, New York Times bestseller list. I mean, I guess he can afford to be a little pretentious. <laughs> but like I said, I watch his videos because they're essentially like big live-action cooking cartoons, and they are fun to watch. Joshua is Joshua Wiseman. Like I said, he's the, he's the guy. He's currently like the reigning king of YouTube cooking videos, um, which I just said. His cartoons are, yeah, his his uh, videos are like nice live action cartoons, and they are fun to watch, and I don't deny that. On the other hand, again, for learning, for getting real cooking tips and for seeing things that you want to make, uh, I would recommend looking at Brian Lagerstrom. And also food wishes. I'm sure everybody here has probably learned at one time or another from Chef John and food wishes. <laughs> Babish is fun, yes. Okay, still, we are getting on in time here, and we've definitely made a lot of potatoes. There's no denying that here. And most of these were actually pretty darn successful here. Uh, we've, got, um, we've got the mashed potatoes. We've got the... We've got the fries here. We've got the uh, potato skins. We've got the potato flour. So we've actually done quite a few potatoes tonight. And, of course, we did them in cast iron, such as in this large uh, Dutch oven. For the record, it's been, what has it been, like maybe about 15 minutes at this point? In 15 minutes, this thing has cooled down to 222 degrees, which is still darn hot, yes. But um, as you can see, in maybe an hour or so, this should be uh, cool enough where I can actually uh, reserve the oil. So at least we're past the fire hazard. That, of course, is the main thing to be concerned about, which means at this point, it's now safe to put the lid on. <laughs> that way the cats will be safe as well. Whatever happened to Culinary Fanatic, which is kind of what, what we heard at the beginning of this channel. Well, uh, he's actually doing well. He's recovered from COVID, in fact. Uh, he's doing good. 
He, uh, you can check out his Facebook group, Culinary Fanatics, and you will be able to uh, chat with him there, where he still cooks and he still posts pictures. He just has not done videos in uh, quite a while. So, <laughs> And speaking of which, I guess I'll end this on one note, but I will be very, very brief. I'm not going to get into this in detail. Folks, uh, oh, what? Oh, crap. Are they still in there? Are they still in the oven? Holy crap. Um, I think I'm... Okay. How could I forget? Oh, yes, they are. Oh, these things look darn good, though. There's no denying that. I forgot about these. Oh, my bad. In fact, this is good enough where I can put them up here. It's not going to set the oil on fire or anything. <laughs> How could I forget these? Oh, but hey... Oh, damn, that's hot. Okay, but hey, here we are. It's always something, isn't it? But look at this. Twice baked potatoes, folks. <laughs> oh, crap. Yes, exactly. Thank you, Jamie. <laughs> I mean, these things are still there in the oven, and I just plain forgot about them. But we got them out just in time. You know why? Well, actually, you know what? You know what these things are now coated with that you are all so crazy about? Brown cheese. Hey, oh, yeah, she's liking that. Yeah, no, we did forget to make some bacon, or we didn't have time to make some bacon. But on the other hand, the cheese on top is browned. I think we got it out just in time. A couple more minutes, and it probably would have burned. But we've got brown cheese on these uh, twice-baked potatoes. So this is actually looking pretty good. Yeah, this is definitely twice baked, all right. No denying that. <laughs> From the way I forgot it, you might think that I might be baked as well. But no, I can honestly say no, I have not done any baking of that kind. <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> so actually, there we go. We've got five dishes. Uh, mashed potatoes, twice baked potatoes, French fries, potato uh, skins, and the uh, potato flour. So yeah, we have got we have got a lot to go through. And yeah, actually I do indeed like how this turned out. I <laughs> almost ruined it, but thanks to Jamie, we didn't. And so now as a result, it's a success. Yeah, <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> Mighty mouse. All yeah. right. Yeah, there we go. So we are doing pretty darn good now. And now, as I was about to say before I head off, one little bit of seriousness, and then that will be it, because I do have to ask for a little bit of support. Not money support, just you know, well wishes for my godson, who has COVID, unfortunately. I posted this on my, uh, to, on my Facebook uh, page earlier today. I have not posted it here yet, partly because anytime you mention COVID here on YouTube, some people decide to make a political issue at it. And I am, and believe me, when it comes to, you know, people close to me, I am not going to tolerate that. All I'll say is just that. Um, yesterday morning, as I was just pulling out of the driveway to go to work, I got a text from uh, Mama Bear. And she said that she had, she, her husband, and, and the baby, three-year-old baby bear, had contracted COVID. They had 103-degree temperatures, and they were fighting to uh, keep from having to go to the uh, emergency room. Because, unfortunately, here in my town, the, emer the hospitals are still packed to the gills with COVID patients. So, I, so uh, it's been about uh, a day and a half already. They are still sick. But the fever seems to have broken slightly. I mean, especially for a three-year-old with a 103-degree temperature, that was very, very frightening. And she, in fact, put him in, in a bath to help cool him down. Uh, I went and I got some uh, over-the-counter medicine, you know, children's uh, Tylenol and uh and all and uh, flu stuff and all that to uh, help treat him, but they are still uh, they're still battling it right now as we speak. Although it, this appears to be, it does not look like fortunately the worst is going to happen. I mean they are they are still in pretty tough shape. They are still in pretty rough shape. Yet none of it does not seem to be life threatening. So 
I can only say that at this point, it looks like uh, they're doing well. And I just had to mention this, you know, just to you folks here, because, well, again, it's 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 important. I mean, hey, he's my godson. You know, it's like I was asked to be the gods to be the godfather and he's very close to me. So I appreciate uh, getting this off my chest. They're doing OK, fortunately. So. But that's about. Yeah. Yeah, no, there is that. Oh, yeah, that is the other thing. It also means, though, that I was exposed to COVID last Saturday when I saw them. So, and in fact, that's the other thing. I feel fine right now. I have so far, <clears throat> I'm actually not especially worried because I am vaccinated. I had my shots last year and I had my booster uh, less than a month ago, just, uh, just after the new year. Yes, you are. Oh, yes, they are. Yes, they are. They are vaccinated. Well, being vaccinated can't, won't prevent you from contracting it again. Because, yes. Right. Yes, exactly. Yeah. I went to an urgent. No, it's not, though. I went to an urgent care clinic yesterday to get a test and confirm whether or not it's COVID. And they said I had to wait another two days because COVID has a five day incubation period, which means that a test after only three days may not have been accurate. So they advised to come back and I will uh, be checking tomorrow morning. As I said, I am not too worried about myself. I'm more concerned, of course, about my godson. And it looks like, though, at least that uh, they are going to be pulling through this. So, so it's... It, that one's, it's like, I mean, it's, it's not... I put this way, I mean, how many times have I left the house? Yeah. Two years. Two mm -hmm. years. Mm -hmm. Two years we're going on. I think I've been to the store... Five times? <laughs> yeah, so. Five times in two years. Yeah. All right. It's scary. It's scary out there, yeah, folks. It is. So I have no immune system. So, yeah. Like, I, yeah I'm have you, surprised. and Louis J. Castan Cooking, have I gotten COVID yet? No. So far, I have not. It's I'm been, scared. although this is my second scare because I was also exposed last Friday fall when my New York friends came to visit. And then after they came home, they found that they had contracted it. So uh, I got a test back then and it still came negative. So I can only hope it stays that way. Be that as it may, um, you sounded pretty sick in your last video. Well, I d about a week and a half ago, I did have myself a sore throat and that was enough for me to take a sick day from work that week. However, that was a week and a half ago. That was, yeah, I was, I was, sick. I was sick for two months now. Right. And in fact, I had exactly. contracted that exactly. one. Yeah, I had contracted that one from Jamie. So that was not COVID. So, yeah. I sick. Yeah. Sick. yeah. So, but anyway, as I said, I'm not, I'm not asking anybody. I'm not burdening anybody on this. I'm just getting this off my chest. You know, just letting you folks know what's going on. It's also one of the reasons why I've unfortunately seemed to have been barely producing any of these uh, edited videos, which I really want to do. So I want to have time to do it, but it's been busy every single night. <laughs> However, that's the situation here. And the thing is, I'm not alone. I know a lot of you, if you have not had COVID, you know somebody who does, probably somebody close, family members, uh, friends or the like, and yeah, because this is a tough situation, everybody. Um, I'm not going to get political about it. I've gotten political before. I'm not going to get political now because this is not really the time and the place for it. Uh, I'm just too concerned and just want to be sure that everybody's doing okay, especially my uh, godson and, and again, Mama Bear and her husband and best wishes to them. And having said that though, let's uh, cheer. Okay. On the other hand, as I said, they seem like they are pulling through. He's actually he's actually doing better already. So he still seems to be averaging like about 100 to 101 degree temperature, but that's not as bad. So let's get uh, let's uh, cheer things up now. And I'm sorry I got people folks down with this. And let's get back to uh, something happy. Like so, like I said, let's have some potatoes, shall we? Because hey, potatoes are health food. And anyway, I'm still here. As I said, everybody seems like they're they're pulling through. And all we can do is just uh, stick and stick around and have some fun, uh, which at least will help get our mind off of the serious stuff going on. Because there is some really serious stuff going on. 
But nonetheless, though, I'm still going to keep on doing this. And I really very much, as always, I say, I appreciate everybody. Yes, don't forget every year the flu, the flu and colds come. No, definitely. I make sure to get my flu shot every year for that reason. So, But anyway, as I said, let's, right now... I'm still uh, more than happy to uh, keep doing these videos because, hey, they, you know, they help keep me. They, they're a lot of fun to do. And as I've said enough times, it's you folks showing up here is really what makes these fun. And I can only thank everybody doing that. Any update on the new apartment? Well, the word seems to be uh, that I'm going to be hopefully moving within the next month or so. So by this time next month, well, with any luck, I'm going to be looking at a brand new kitchen, and I can only hope so. And, well, okay, James Ramsdale, yes, exactly. Why they consider COVID a political thing, that in itself, um, that's something That's something we'll discuss another time. Right now, we... Yes. Oh, yeah. That's a loaded question. But, hey, instead of a loaded question, let's have some loaded potatoes. How about that? Yeah, here's a loaded question for you. Do these things look good? I think they do. And let's at, let's ask an lo another loaded question. Who here uh, wants uh, wants me to send those ugly hammered skillets to Jose? <laughs> it's probably easier to say who doesn't want those uh, ugly hammered skillets to go to Jose. So uh, we'll make arrangements on that. And other than that, though, as I said, I can only thank everybody for watching here. Rick Stumbau, Louis J. Cast Iron Cooking, Jose Latias, TD9175Sr., William Hurt, Granny Graham, Paw Paw Dan, and, uh, and uh, JD High 4, Miranda Benedict, and everybody else. Yeah, I mean, even after an hour and a half, we still have 90 people watching here. 91, in fact. And, I, and so, again, I can only thank everybody very much for, so, for uh, showing up. And I'm, I have a lot of fun on these, and I can only hope you do, too. So, um, uh, poor Jose. Well, actually, congratulations to Jose at this point. So, and so thank you so much for everybody. And Sin did it. Well, that's what that I consider that a very good compliment. Thank you very much for that. And okay, having said all that, I guess it's about time to sign off because it is still a work night for me too. Tomorrow morning, yeah, I've got to go back and get a COVID test. And then I've got to come home and work from home on the phones which is a lot better than some people. So I'm, so I can only be thankful for that. And I'm thankful for everybody for showing up here. So, okay. Yeah. Will you send me a twice baked potato? Well, I'm not sure how will it would survive the trip through, uh, across through the U S post awful. And having said that, I think it's time to uh, bid everybody a fair, a uh, good night, everyone. Thank you so much for watching once again. I think the cooking was a little better than last week, <laughs> and hopefully next week's will be as well. See you all next Wednesday, Wednesday, folks. Have a good evening. Bye.